In the remote jungles of Southeast Asia, frightened locals claim to see a prehistoric throwback. They come out of the edge of the forest into plantations. Said to be half man, half ape, locals call it Orang Pendek, or Little Man of the Woods. This is an animal which is on the brink of extinction in this area. Fossil evidence says a unique human species did live here thousands of years ago. But has it survived? I think probably there are small relic populations surviving. Monster Quest launches an intrepid search up the slopes of an ancient volcano. This is a movement detector here. And finds evidence. Ah, oh, I see the shape, yeah. Fantastic, well done. That may lead science to uncover the mystery. Well, this is interesting. There clearly are some toes. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. The Republic of Indonesia, a country made up of more than 17,500 separate islands in Southeast Asia, a diverse and dangerous place of active volcanoes, dense rainforests, tigers, poisonous snakes, and rhinos. But there may be something else hiding here, a creature that locals have reported for centuries and scientists are only now examining, said to be half man, half ape, mostly referred to as Orang Pendek, which in Indonesian means short person. I turned to the guide and said, you know, what is this? And, and his hand was shaking like this. He said, I don't, I don't know. Hair covered its entire body as I could see it. It was a very pretty color. Um, sort of tawny gold color. The last time when we were here, we saw it turn over a log, yeah? And, and eat the bugs underneath it. Described as about three feet tall, reddish in color, with a slender orangutan-like body, the orang pendek is always seen walking on two feet with an erect posture and most disturbing, it has a human-looking face, a description that fits a real being. In 2004, scientists revealed that they had found partial skeletons of a very small species of human that grew no larger than a three-year-old child of average height. Named Homo floresiensis, or Flores Man, after the Indonesian island where it was found, it became known as the real hobbit, after the tiny creatures from the movie Lord of the Rings. Flores Man may have been small, but he was also formidable. Stone tools and fossilized remains of elephants and Komodo dragons were also found at the dig site, suggesting Flores was a skilled hunter. While these fossils are believed to be about 18,000 years old, experts believe that the Flores Man likely lived alongside humans until about 13,000 years ago, before dying out. The question is, is there a link between Flora's man, the real hobbit, and recent sightings of the Orang Pendek? The possibility certainly exists and, and, and should be considered that Orang Pendek and Homo floresiensis are one and the same. Jeff Meldrum is a paleoanthropologist at Idaho State University. Homo floresiensis may lie at the root of the stories of the small people of the forest, the Orang Pendek. Maybe this is a, a different species altogether. But where is the evidence? This Monster Quest expedition travels to the island of Sumatra, only 1,400 miles from Flores, where the Homo floresiensis fossils were discovered, and where locals claim to still see the Orang Pendek. Two veteran Orang Pendek researchers will lead a search into a remote jungle. It is here that they will deploy an array of high-tech camera systems, pheromone chips, and professional trackers. However, yeah. everybody here is aware of the story. There's nothing else that could be mistaken for. That's why, that's why it's so interesting. That's why I keep coming back. A decade before the Flores man's skeleton was found, another researcher was investigating the Orang Pendek. I knew the National Park rather well. I'd been here since 1994. Debbie Martyr, a former journalist, was one of the first to examine the mystery. It started off looking, uh, trying to validate an animal that was here, an animal called Orang Pendek. In 1994, in the Karinchi National Park in Sumatra, Debbie Martyr claims she spotted the Orang Pendek. I saw a bipedal primate, which was moving very bipedally. 
martyr who was carrying a camera never got a photograph. Once the animal had gone and once I'd stopped swearing quite dreadfully because I hadn't taken a photograph, bang went the front cover of Time magazine. She never got a good look at the creature's face, but from what she did see, it was not like any animal she had seen. Martyr claims it looked a little like an orangutan, but different. Very, very broad shoulders. So that the small, the head was very small in relation to the, the breadth of the shoulder. Orangutans do live in Sumatra, and skeptics say it is most likely the animal eyewitnesses are really seeing. But Martyr disagrees. It was like seeing something from the wrong side of time. The word orangutan is derived from the Malay and Indonesian words meaning man of the forest. Adults stand between four and five and a half feet tall and have reddish hair. But there is a problem with the orangutan theory. Officially, orangutans have never been spotted in this part of Sumatra. New researchers have continued the hunt. Jeremy Holden is a professional wildlife photographer who has caught images of rare animals like the Sumatran tiger and Asian elephant. I photographed many, many species that have never been photographed before. Many, many things, probably something like 60 or 70 species now, including birds. Holden has teamed up with experienced tracker Adam Davies in this Monster Quest expedition. If ever you were sort of having a fantasy island moment and you wanted a monster to hide, I always thought this would just be the place. The team is deep within the epicenter of the sightings in the remote Karinshi Seblot National Park. This park is where Debbie Martyr saw the Orang Pendek and where locals continue to see the creature. Located two degrees south of the equator in the heart of the island of Sumatra, Karinshi Park covers almost 1.4 million hectares over four provinces and is located within the Bukit Barisan mountain range, one of the most remote rainforests in the world. The search destination is near Mount Karinchi, the tallest peak on the island, rising to more than 12,000 feet above the Indian Ocean. It is also where in 2001, Adam Davies found what he believes is the footprint of the Orang Pendek. If you were to put that print next to all known species here, you, you would clearly see that there's a massive difference. The cast of the print reveals a strange anatomy, an opposable thumb similar to an orangutan, but with short, broad toes like a human. Davy sent a copy of the print cast to Dr. Jeff Meldrum for examination. These uh, pads are impressively stout, suggesting that Maybe this is a, a different species altogether that has adaptations to walking on the ground. Davies also sent the cast to Dr. David Shivers, a university reader in primate biology and conservation at Selwyn College at the University of Cambridge, England. So these footprints were very exciting, very unusual, because they were mixed characters from all the different apes and humans. To Chivers, the most fascinating detail about the Orang Pendek is its ability to walk upright or bipedally. There is only one other primate in the world that walks like this, humans. They've got the toes that are shorter, more like human. The heel is like nothing in that it's curved. We call it banana foot, khaki pisang. The print Davies cast in 2001 seems to support the Orang Pendek descriptions. The short, broad toes would be better for walking bipedally rather than grasping limbs like the mostly tree-bound orangutan. However, skeptics say the print could be from a deformed or mutilated orangutan. Meldrum and Chivers say Davies must obtain corroborating evidence, like similar prints, photographs, or a body. This 10-day monster quest search reaches the shadow of the active volcano Mount Karinchi on the dormant slopes of Mount Gunung Tujur. It's a beautiful place, but I would not live here because there's earthquakes, there's two slap bang in the middle of two volcanoes. It'll all be gone in an instant, and I love it, but oh, give me the heebie-jeebies. With 10 porters and hundreds of pounds of equipment, it is a physically demanding hike up the slick and unstable muddy slope. 7,000 feet above sea level to the rim of the volcano. Going up the trail is a bit deceptive because you see light through the trees. You always feel like you're nearly over the lip. But I have to remind myself I'm actually only halfway up. 
the team knows that one misstep could compromise the expedition. We're at the top of the volcano's edge, and we're going to descend now down the lip of the volcano, actually to the lake. This is the bit that I've been waiting for because the views are just awesome. You won't have seen anything like it. It takes my breath away. I've been here four times, and there's not a, there's not a week goes by when in my mind I don't think about how beautiful this place is. Located inside the volcano is the Gunung Tuja Lake. They must traverse the lake to the base camp, set up near many game trails, where there have been numerous Orang Pendek sightings. One of the guides for the expedition has seen the creature. Holden translates his story. Yes, yeah, so what he's saying, it wasn't much taller than a meter, but again, he's talking about this big, big body. It was covered in, in um, grayish, yellowish hair. It was walking on two legs, not four. When they saw it, it did this, put its arms up. Which is a, like a classic ape defense to make itself look much, much bigger. And I've heard this story many, many times from many, many people. And when it was walking there, again on two legs, but it was reaching for branches as it was, as it was traveling. The guide also found a print. Then he's saying that the, the gem pole, the thumb, is actually far back. Jaudi Blakan, so he's saying it's, it's far back on the on the heel. It's not like with a human or a bear, where the, 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 the thumb is, is just part of the foot. This description is encouraging, as it seems to validate Davy's 2001 print. But there is more. He's saying, yeah, when we saw it, we were very, very surprised. Fear of the creature is a common theme among locals. They say this ape man is intelligent, able to remain undetected, while watching them from the dark jungle. Davies and Holden are now just an hour away from their final destination. But first, they must traverse the deep lake the only way possible, in primitive dugout canoes called sampans. This is where we were camped with Debbie, this uh, head, headland here. When, we saw, when she saw the first storm pendant. The men and their equipment weigh the sampans deep into the water for their final push into what the guides say is the land of the Orang Pendek. Southeast Asia may have a monster. The Orang Pendek is said to be a race of mystery apes that lurk deep in the jungle. More than 30 years before the discovery of a strange skull, a similar creature was seen by unlikely visitors, American GIs. I flew the Hueys. We had the uh, UH-1H models. Larry Wilson is a retired Army helicopter pilot. In July of 1970, Wilson was sent to Vietnam, assigned to the Air Cavalry. Mm. It was during a mission to replace a faulty communications device that Wilson saw something that even today he still can't explain. I would say November to December of 70, probably. It was kind of crazy. It was early in the morning. We took off real early because we knew we had to go out quite a ways. We uh, were flying down a stream valley, kind of like, and. Uh, the stream made a U around this ridge line that came down and it kind of pushed the stream out of the way. And rather than follow the stream around, we just hopped up over this ridge line. And as we were climbing up to get over this ridge line, ahead of us we could see this scraggly old tree. It must have been one that had been defoliated. You know, it looked like it was dead. And we saw the thing wiggling at first, and then we saw what it was that was wiggling. It was this like ape-like creature, but it looked like a man. We thought at first it was a bad guy. We almost killed it. Wilson believes he startled the creature, but it didn't move and continued to shake the tree that it was in as Wilson moved the Huey in for a closer look. His face was kind of round, you know. He didn't have what I would call a human skull. Uh, it was more flat on top and, and, and almost like a, a soccer ball kind of shaped to the head, uh, but short hair. There was no tail. I mean, his facial features looked very much like a man.
Stories like Wilson's are common throughout the area, but the epicenter of the most recent sightings is the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. Jeremy Holden and Adam Davies are now just an hour's canoe ride from where locals claim to have seen the Orang Pendek. It just always occurs to me when I travel in these that this is probably the first ever type of transport that was made by human beings, just a hollowed log, because that's what these are, nothing more than a hollowed log. With the last obstacle behind them, the team set up their expedition base camp. Now the hunt begins. We finally arrived at base camp. Um, we've spent days traveling here, we've climbed that mountain, we were covered in sweat, and now finally we're here. One of the good things about being here is that a couple of days ago, the guides built um, our shelter. Now we're gonna be spending most of the time here. Um, obviously, when we're resting, we're gonna be eating and sleeping here and also cooking here, all the lovely dried fish we bought and all the other things. What I know about the Orang Pendek is from people who've done a lot of detailed research here, like Jeremy. Um, it's, it's obviously bipedal. Um, it varies in size and colour. It's an opportunist feeder. Um, and it seems extremely intelligent. It's, um, it's a unique um, and obviously a very rare species. As the search is about to begin, the rainforest lives up to its name. It rains non-stop for almost two full days. The expedition is halted. Most animals hunker down in storms, so a search now would be futile anyway. If the storm doesn't break soon, the entire trip will be in jeopardy. This rain, I've never ever seen anything like it. I've been up to Gurun Karinshi. This is my fourth time here, and it's absolutely chucking it down. The rain is awesome. The place is beautiful, but it's just so frustrating. Finally, a break in the clouds. The expedition is back in action. Well, the principal aim of, of Project Orion Pendek was to validate the claims we made about our sightings. Either some DNA evidence, hairs, bones, some kind of skin matter, or, in my case, a good, clear photograph. And that's the one thing that, up until now, neither myself nor anyone else has managed to, to photograph. Hey, Donny. But getting a photograph of Orang Pendek will not be easy. The one problem with Orang Pendek is it, it seems to be highly mobile. So it's not living in a territory, or not, certainly not living in a very small territory. And also it's not following a set route. There's always going to be die-hard skeptics. That are, they're not going, to, not going to be convinced unless you dump a body on their desk. Turn the camera on. While the heavy rains have washed all the game trails clean of old tracks, it also provides the team with a unique opportunity. Just like the research team, the animals of the forest are on the move, and the signs are fresh. There's our first sign of wild animals here. You can see wild pigs have been turning up this ground here, looking for roots or reptiles or insects to eat. So I came in here to have a look if there was any sign. Doesn't seem to be any sign of our own pen neck, but what we have got is a mound of tapir dung. It's not just animal tracks that give Holden hope. This area also has good food sources. So to my mind, for OP, this is an absolute classic location. Nice and open, plenty of things to eat. One of the things we found it's quite commonly eating are these, these gingers. And what it does is break, usually quite high like this, and then again quite low, and then twist this stem. So what we're after is this 
white pith inside. It's not bad. More freshly minted animal tracks are a good sign. The animals of the forest are on the move again. We've chosen a spot here for the camera. There's a small trail coming up. There's a, what I call a topographic channeling is happening here. It's likely any animals coming down from the mountain here, wanting to cross over into this valley, are gonna use this. It's not particularly pleasant to walk through this forest here, and it's, it's, it's very steep, this side. Rain clouds can be seen in the distance. Time is running out. Because our appendix is a biped, it's still gonna be taller than most animals we'd usually photo trap. So we have to have the camera far enough back so we don't end up with a picture of a chest with no head. While Holden works on setting up the traps, Adam Davies gathers his gear to head in another direction. The two have decided to split up to cover as much ground as possible. Now behind camp two is an area of the greatest concentration of those sightings where I found a number of trails in different years. If we do find something, I have um, scalpels, tweezers, and ethanol samples. So hopefully we can get some hairs and that can lead to DNA analysis. I love tracking um, these, these, these animals, yeah. Especially as I'm firmly convinced that one's around this area. It's a massive rush. Yeah, so if we, if we see something, you know, it's going to be wild. Oh, Adam, that footprint. Davies is working with the most experienced guide in the region, a local by the name of Sahar. We've found our first animal print of the day, um, which is obviously good news because um, it means the ground isn't so wet and we can get prints. This one here, this small print, is an Asian golden cat. Just a few hundred yards from camp, Davies makes an even more ominous discovery. Evidence that another animal is in the area, a potentially dangerous predator. What Sahar's saying is this, um, this is the bones of a deer that's been killed by a tiger around here. Just a few hundred yards from the base camp, Adam Davies has found several carcasses and signs that this is a fresh feeding site for a tiger. At over seven feet long and up to 300 pounds, the Sumatran tiger is the top predator here. It feeds on deer, boar, and even primates like orangutans and occasionally humans. I'm no anatomist, but my initial um, uneducated view about these things is it would fit quite neatly in there. <laughs> so there we go, pig. It's not, a, it obviously wasn't a, uh, an orang pandek. We're not gonna be that lucky. <laughs> Davies estimates the carcass is only days old. The bones rot a lot in the jungle, yeah? Can you see the fungus on the, on the tip of it already? Yeah. Finding an orang pendak carcass would be a rare find indeed. As these bones show, it takes the jungle little time to break down remains. Just past the trail from the pig and deer bones are signs of more animals. Deer, a bear. Yeah, this is a bear. So Claiming in a tree, yeah. This is close. Where's he climbed up there? Yeah. Do you think he might be up there now? <laughs> no. Skeptics say the moon jab or sun bear is one likely animal that people could mistake for the orang pendek. At only four feet tall, it is the smallest bear species. It can walk briefly on its hind legs and is an excellent climber. So here we've just found some claw marks from Malay sun bear. This is probably the, the biggest culprit in confusion with orang pendek. Similar kind of size, similar kind of habits. But probably the, the most damning thing is that the, the footprint that a bear leaves looks much more like a small human footprint than that left by Oren Pendek. The true identity of the Orang Pendek has long been a mystery. 
When Venetian explorer Marco Polo was visiting the island of Sumatra in 1295, islanders allegedly presented him with a small ape-like man. They had seen exactly the same thing. The local people were reporting this erect bipedal ape gliding in and out of the forest. They come out of the edge of the forest into plantations, and that's where they've been seen most by people at dawn and dusk. Jeremy Holden also claims to have seen the Orang Pendek and says that it is not a sun bear or any other known animal. The first thing I thought was it was, it was much bigger than I'd expected. At a lower elevation near the park's entrance, Jeremy Holden first noticed the unusual footprint in a potato field. I called my guide over and said, you know, what's this? And he immediately said, this is our appendix. Holden followed the trail into the forest. And as I made my way in, I saw a banana palm sway like this. So I just ducked down. And then no more than seven meters away, I saw the animal pass in front of me. So it was, it was very close. I had a camera around my neck. I was very close to it, but I just kept quiet and watched it just briefly pass. Although he never saw the face, Holden did get a good profile view of the creature. I saw the side of the head and the, the huge arms which were moving like a human when that walks and down to the waist. But something that's very erect, it wasn't stooped over, it wasn't shuffling or stumbling like I've seen orangutans do when they're on the ground. This was something that was clearly at home walking on two legs. With this, it was a, a clear pelt of what appeared to be quite short hair. And the, the color of the animal I saw was like a yellowish, almost like dried grass. Even now, the sighting haunts Holden. With a camera around his neck, he never took a photo. Seeing Oren Pendek was probably the, the greatest achievement, the greatest uh, victory in my whole life. Not photographing it is certainly it, is my greatest failure. Davies shares Holden's frustration. When you know something's there, you know something's tangible. Um, I just want to do my best to try and prove it. Adam Davies is now near the same spot where he found his best track in 2001. The heavy rain has washed these trails clean of any animal sign. They have found nothing, but that is about to change. Oh, wait. What's this? What? Print. Oh, yeah. What do you make of that? Have a look. Oh, I think it's a... Uh... A rampant footprint, brilliant. Yeah, I think so. Why? Ah, oh, oh, I see yeah. the shape, yeah. You can see the opposable thumb, yeah? I think so. It's the same size as the prints that we found last yeah. time near here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic, well done. At about six inches in diameter, with short toes and an opposable thumb, the print appears to be similar to the track he found here in 2001. Well, what I want you to do, right, what I want you to do <coughs> is if you go up, go up the trail, yeah, mm. and have a look to see if you can see any more, yeah. OK? Because I don't want to corrupt the ground by two of us walking on it. Uh -huh. If you see any hairs, okay. don't touch them. Just, just tell me where they are. Yeah. So you go and have a look now, yeah, and I'll stay here. Yeah. If you see anything, we'll come back and discuss them, I'll OK? Come back here again. Yeah, and we'll make a plaster of Paris cast of this one, yeah? Okay, right. In a bit. Forest guide, Adam. Forest guide, cheers, mate. Yeah. Adam, forest guide. <laughs> Adam, forest guide. <laughs> One good print could be enough to prove this is the same animal from 2001. Additional prints could reveal a resident population. Adam, come here. What have you got, Sahar? You can see uh, one more footprint. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It is. Around my deck? Yeah, um, I don't know, maybe. Hold on. It's the same size as the other one. Yeah, yeah, see. So the animals come through here on a trail. Oh, that's brilliant. I've got another one. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really good work, Sahar. I can't believe it. This is in the same place, it's the same shape as the ones we found last time. Yeah. In all, they find four distinct prints spread out over 200 yards. 
before the trail goes cold. But there is another important clue here, one that leads Davies to conclude this animal is walking on two legs. The creature has come down here, walking bipedally, in other words, on two legs. And because this section's difficult, you've got the tree trunk there, it's put its hand there for grip and this moss here has come off it, so sheared off it like that as it's gone through. These sort of clues are really important, A, to determine what type of creature it is, and B, to actually picking up its trail. The damp conditions make the casts fragile, and Davies nervous. It's almost, in these sort of situations for me, because I can feel the adrenaline pumping, it's almost like waiting for somebody to give birth, because I've had prints before and they've crumbled away. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. And you can see the toes and the opposable thumb. Um, so we need to get it cleaned up back in camp. But at least we've got one print that's working. I'm really, really pleased. Oh, it's in one piece. Yeah, you can see, again, you can see the print, can't you? And the toes on it. Fantastic, three in a row, that's awesome. But before they can cast the final print, the sky opens up again. Yes. Cover this one over and we'll go back to camp and we'll leave this one for Jeremy to have a look at. Fresh tracks mean something is in the area and they want to lure it back within range of the camera traps. Davies brought pheromone chips made from ape sexual secretions. I kind of think that this is an unknown species, so nothing ventured, nothing gave. But it's been chemically composed, apparently, to attract um, primates. I hope, I hope the around pendant likes her men smelling strong. With the casts firm enough to transport, they head back to camp to share the find with the rest of the team. Jeremy, Jeremy, we've got some prints. Do uh, get them out and show you. Okay, I think we need to uh, give these a clean now so that we can properly see the definition on it. In the remote jungle of Sumatra, an island of Indonesia, Monster Quest researchers Jeremy Holden and Adam Davies are hot on the trail of what they believe is an orang pendek or OP, as they call it. I am a field researcher, I am not a scientist, but I understand the importance of getting anything credibly and independently analysed. This is where um, I found the first print here. We've got um, at least four good ones, and it's the last one I especially want to show you. because that's... With the wet weather, it could take days before the casts are dry enough to examine. So Adam brings Jeremy back to the location where it was found to search for other evidence, like hair or droppings. OK, mate, it's right up here. Clearly got the four. I think, oh, maybe one toe obscured by this, that root. Yep. Clearly four toes, and I guess this is, corresponds to the hallux or the thumb. What do you think, Jeremy? It's certainly not tiger, it's not tapir. And it's with the spacing here and this toe down here, it's, it's certainly not bare either, which gives us really not much choice. And it seems to be a print of a large primate. Unfortunately, just as we put the plaster into the print, it started to pour with rain. So we've covered it up. It 
It's now a day and a half later because the rain just didn't stop at all yesterday. I don't know what state this is going to be in, whether it's going to be usable or not. We just have to hope. Oh. Not sure that's going to convince any skeptics. <laughs> With the pheromone chips in place, they want to position another camera trap directly over this location. So we're going to put a camera here, because this is where Adam found the first footprints and also where he's left the pheromones. So there's perhaps some likelihood the animal's going to come back this way, check those out. So if it does, we need to have a camera here to catch that. With all the camera traps set, they return to camp to clean up and examine the prints. That's just over 16 centimetres, yeah. which is about six inches. The prints we found over the other side of the mountain were all usually about 21 centimetres. But the prints I found last time were about 16. Comparable evidence is important. If these new prints are a match to the mystery prints Davies found in 2001, then they believe a case can be made that this is the same animal or animal species. The, the shortness of it could well be because these toes almost seem to be pointing. I mean, look at the depth of this, for instance. Yeah. And here also, it seems almost the toes are dig. Was this found on a slope? Yes, it was. Anything with a 16 centimeter foot, you've got, that's usually about the size of a bear's footprint. Mm. They're usually about 16 centimeters. For a tiger, that's big. Mm. It's also about the, the, the same size as a tapir. With a tapir, obviously, mm. you've got one big toe, two, mm. two toes coming yeah. out the side here. A tiger, four big pads. A bear, the toes are very, very close together. And it's more like a, sm actually like a small human foot. Mm. But here with this obvious hallux, this can only be a primate, yeah. something with an opposable thumb. The only non-human primate large enough to make this print is the Sumatran orangutan, which has never been seen in this area. Furthermore, while both have an opposable thumb, the length of the toes are no match. And as there are no large terrestrial primates known from Kerinchisa Black National Park, it's an unknown species of, of terrestrial primate and probably Orempendek, the animal we're looking for. Fantastic. The team packs up the casts to be sent on to Dr. Jeff Meldrum, professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University. Well, this is interesting. Meldrum is an expert on mystery ape footprints. He houses one of the largest collections of Bigfoot, Yeti, and other mystery ape footprints in the world. So footprint casts have, have continued to accumulate here in my lab. Not only does Meldrum have Davies' new casts, but a copy of the mystery print from Davies' expedition in 2001. Adam's original print from several years ago uh, has some interesting comparisons and contrasts to the new ones. I mean, if, if this is perhaps a divergent big toe, then we would we see that it's, it's disposed much further up the foot than is suggested here. Of the four prints cast by Davies and Holden, two appear to have enough detail for further examination. We, we actually have Adam's original print already scanned into our virtual museum, our virtual collection. So I'd like to take these over to the uh, Idaho Virtualization Lab and have these two scanned and get some 3D renderings. For more than a century, stories of a small human-like creature have drifted out of Indonesia, with the island of Sumatra at the epicenter a creature that some say is very similar to skeletal remains found in neighboring Flores, a miniature man dubbed the real Hobbit. This woman says that a sighting changed her life. It was like seeing something from the wrong side of time. Locals claim it walks on two feet and has a human-looking face. This man cast a print in 2001 that experts say is unlike any primate known to man. And Monster Quest launched an expedition in an effort to uncover the mystery. We've got 
um, at least four good ones. Jeremy Holden and Adam Davies have found four footprints that they believe belong to a mystery ape most call the Orang Pendek. What's been special is we've got an animal actually following a trail continually, which we, and we've actually been able to mark it off for some distance. They have been in the forest now for seven days with camera traps snapping away. It is time to leave, and he is hoping at least one camera has captured what they seek. Yeah, there's always a great sense of anticipation when it, whenever you collect film. Whenever I was collecting films from here, for instance, you always think this could be the time. The first camera trap reveals there are photos. Because of the high humidity, especially this week where it's rained every single day, the cameras still worked. We, all we caught was pictures of Adam and Sahar coming back from, from one of their treks. But it still shows that the, the cam cameras are working. And that's an that's important thing. As they check each trap, the story is the same. Any, any pictures of us again. Only one camera trap remains to be checked, but it is also the most anticipated. Now this is the last camera trap. Set where the pheromones were placed and also where we found the first prints. So it's the one most likely to have anything. No, nothing. Once again, a photograph of the Orang Pendek has eluded both men. Well, disappointed, yeah, but not surprised. It will still be several days before they can make it out of the jungle and contact Dr. Meldrum, but nothing can overshadow their excitement about the possible results of the footprint analysis. Robert, here are those uh, casts from Sumatra that we were anticipating we'd like to get uh, a three-dimensional scan of. There it is. The prints are scanned using two lasers of different size and speed. The resulting images are not only in 3D, but minute details mostly invisible to the naked eye are now revealed. It allows us to analyze these structures uh, quantitatively in three dimensions. We can make very precise measurements, very precise comparisons between specimens. The three-dimensional images offer us ways not only to visualize, but also to analyze the specimen in ways that uh, simple photography or even uh, holding the original specimen in hand uh, don't afford. What we will be looking for are characteristic features that would distinguish a possible hominoid, an ape or some sort of primate, from um, another human or um, from uh, other common forms of uh, wildlife that might have a track that could be mistaken for presumed orang pendek. Once the images are scanned, Meldrum moves in for a closer look. Actually, can you tip it just a hair more this way? Well, this is interesting. Now, uh, things are, are a little more apparent to me than they were previously. Meldrum is optimistic. Four fresh prints and older prints for comparison likely mean answers. They have a prominent pad right here that will sometimes uh, register in the track. And then we have uh, the four outer toes. But a closer look tells him a much different story. And what I was trying to uh, infer as a, as a hallux is actually the ulnar pad uh, of a bear. It appears to be the forepaw of a bear. The evidence seems to point pretty conclusively that, uh, that this is a bear track. I think you'd have, be hard pressed to make a case for this being the, the track of a, a plantigrade primate. And when compared to the older mystery aprints, he finds they are not a match. There's a certain degree of disappointment that, that we didn't have the definitive footprint evidence for an unrecognized primate. Despite the results of their expedition, Davies and Holden have not lost faith in their belief that the Orang Pendek is real and will someday be found.
But there comes a point when you say, look, there's been so much evidence here. We've really got to do something about this before this area is gone. And if there is a, um, a, a primate here, as appears to be the case, then it's time to sort of sit up and take notice and put some money here and have a go. Because when it's gone, it's gone forever. And now's the time to take some action.